Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Today Google released Android 16 QPR2 Beta 3 that I have here on my 10 Pro XL to show you all the new features. So without further ado, let's jump in. Let's start with the update size and the build number as usual. Here I have pp41.250916.009.a1 and the update size is 525 megabytes. And now let's take a look at the new features. Let's start with the new changes in the home screen. And for reference here, I have QPR2 Beta 2 on the right. And the first thing you will see here is the bigger icons in the Google search widget with less spacing between the icons as well. The second change, Google added a new plus button next to the app shortcuts. So you can easily with one hand tap on this plus button to add it to the home screen. And instead of using the drag and the drop gesture, but you still have access to the same drag and drop gesture like before, but the new one makes your life a little bit easier. We also got a new shortcut in the app drawer. When you tap and hold on any app, now you have an option to add to home screen from here. So that's it with the home screen. Now let's talk about the notification history, which got a small design tweak. If you take a look here, you will see that each item is now separated in its own container to match the Material 3 expressive design language instead of having all of them in one container like before. Moving to the quick settings, we have multiple tweaks. If you have multiple players active at the same time, now you can see two small arrows on the left and right to switch between them. And that makes everything in between the arrows smaller than before. You still have access to the same swipe gesture but you got one extra way to switch between them. I also found that the data saver icon got updated and instead of using this pie, it's now an empty circle. And lastly, the screen recording no longer vibrates when you start and end your recording session like it used to be in all the previous versions. Even though I don't have that Do Not Disturb activated, but Beta 3 doesn't vibrate either when I start or when I stop the recording. Before moving any further, let me show you the latest wallpapers added to the wallpapers by in-depth tech reviews app. As you see, all of them look amazing and they work really well with the live effects feature of Android 16. If you want to download the app, you will find the Google Play Store download link in the description. And now let's get back to Android 16 QPR2 Beta 3. Now it's time to talk about all the new changes under settings. And the first one I spotted is under connected devices. When I go to my Pixel Watch, I see a new battery indicator around the Pixel Watch icon. It has a green color and a battery icon at the top. I'm not sure if it will change its color when the battery is low or not, but I will keep you posted in my future videos. Under sound and vibration and then vibration and haptics, we got these new incremental sliders that gives you a haptic feedback at each stop. We have the same haptic feedback in the previous version, but it lacks the dots. Under display and touch, we no longer have the widgets on lock screen menu on the front page like this, but now you can see it under lock screen and then widgets on lock screen. When you go inside, you will see a new design for the feature with the beta tag at the top left corner. And we also lost one of the features, which is when to automatically show. This one no longer exists in beta 3. Under system and then developer options, we no longer have the boot with 16 KB page size toggle in beta 3. So these are all the new features. Now let's talk about the bug fixes that come with this build. And the first one is the reappearance of the media controls on the lock screen. I used to have this bug on my phone, but thankfully it's now fixed and I can interact with my media on the lock screen. Plus Google shared tons of new bug fixes in the release notes. So let's go through them one by one. The first fix is related to the Google Play system updates we're failing to uninstall for some users. The home screen shortcuts appeared as blank gray circles. The wallet icon on your lock screen could sometimes appear with incorrect coloring. Battery charged to 100% when adaptive charging is turned on. The swipe up gesture from the bottom occasionally stopped working. Your selected theme might not apply on the first attempt. The 50 megapixel images captured with the ultra wide or telephoto lens displayed rainbow artifacts. Then we have poor battery life due to excessive CPU usage by the launcher, particularly on foldable devices. Then we have calls could incorrectly route Bluetooth audio. 
users in New Zealand couldn't access all 6 GHz Wi-Fi networks, the terminal app would crash if you changed your device's UI font size while it's open, and then we have users couldn't type special characters like, as you see here on the screen, in the GUI terminal, and then we have a fix for the simultaneously swiping lock screen widgets and the notification shade caused buggy animations and a laggy and unresponsive UI. Then we have a fix for the screen sometimes become unresponsive or froze when unlocking the device. And I did experience this one multiple times, by the way. Then we have the display freezes and the screen noise and another fix for the unexpected device crashes. But this build is not perfect and I do have some bugs that are worth mentioning. The first one is the truncated media controls when I expand the quick settings. I have to scroll slightly like this to see it in full and I'm not sure if that's related to my display size settings. I usually make it bigger than normal but previously, I never had this problem and it only started with the QPR builds. The second issue is related to the lock screen clocks. When you go to the wallpaper and the style app and then lock screen and then scroll down to the clock, you will only find the default option and all the other styles are now gone. Now we are done with the new features, bugs and bug fixes. Now let's talk about my experience with the performance and the stability of this build while filming the video. I didn't see anything groundbreaking. Maybe it's a little bit better than before, but I'm not 100% sure. To me, it functions pretty much the same way, but it definitely has less bugs than before. And I also did a Geekbench 6 score, and what I got is 6,215 in the multi-core and 2310 in the single core, which is pretty much the same as before. So that's pretty much it for today. These are all the new changes in Android 16 QPR2 Beta 3. Please let me know in the comments if I missed anything. But for now, thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.